All right, coming at you live once again. Last time I went live was a week ago. It's a very good stream. Can't remember all the topics we talked about though. I know coronavirus was one, government lockdowns. Are they the proper solution or aren't they? I'm on the aren't they side of that of that question so but yeah here just waiting for some people to come in hopefully they do it would be nice to have another discussion like we did last week i thoroughly enjoyed it got to interact with some of the audience for those of you just joining hello welcome welcome you are encouraged by all means to chime in in the chat Tell me what's going on, tell me what you're thinking, chemistry or otherwise. You know, I'm hesitant to, hello from Alina Ninina. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, but something tells me that I'm not. Um, if I'm not pronouncing it correctly, then I apologize profusely for my gross mispronunciation. But nonetheless, thank you for saying hello and thank you for watching. So, yeah, I'm always reluctant to start talking about anything really interesting or really important too soon in the stream because, you know, I, I don't want to, like, run out of ammo, so to speak. Well, I guess maybe ammo is not the, <laughs> not the proper choice of words. Like, I'm not shooting anything. I, I don't want to run out of uh, too many juicy, fruity uh, ideas or topics because, uh, you know, I, I kind of want to talk about those things when there's, like, a peak amount of concurrent viewers, although I'm not really rocking a lot of concurrent viewers these days, nor have I ever. Haven't been live streaming very long, kind of new to it. Uh, so um, yeah, I, I open the I open the floor up to you guys. Whatever you guys want to talk about, chime in in the chat, and we can talk about it. Looking forward to that. Hope you guys are doing very well. As always, love you guys. Love the audience. Got four people in here, according to my screen. Hello to all four of you. If we were in a, you know, 30 by 30 room all together, all four of us, we would, uh, I think we would still be in compliance with the CDC recommendations of social distancing. So that's very cool. Anton Fogelberg says, hello. Hello, Anton. Welcome back. Um, thank you for your continued viewership. I recognize your name. Hope you're doing well. Right on. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining. Again, um, whatever you guys want to talk about is on the table. I did upload a video recently, so I would thoroughly love to hear your thoughts on that or to read your thoughts on that, I suppose, because I would be reading them in the chat and not hearing them. Um, so yeah, I uploaded a video. If you haven't, if you're not aware, um, I think it dropped on Monday and it was about lattice energy and the born haber cycle. Um, so I tried a couple of new things, new strategies. I actually put some music underneath it. I think it turned out pretty well. I mean, obviously I'm a little biased, but, um, really want to get your feedback on that video if you've seen it or, um, you know, more importantly, what you'd like to see on this channel in the future. Feedback is extremely important. It is essential. I have a very thick skin, so feel free to be as blunt and brutally honest as you want. A. Alsafi. Alsafli. Sorry, I'm so bad. <laughs> My pronunciations are horrible. I apologize. He says hello. Hello. Very nice to meet you and to have you in my stream. Thank you so much for joining. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, uploaded a video recently and sort of back on the horse making educational content. Couldn't be more excited about that. It feels wonderful. Um, I decided to just go ahead and, and continue making educational content as much as I can, even though my house projects are not finished and I'm still super, super busy. So um, I'm going to try to upload weekly. I mean, that's a pretty ambitious goal given how busy I am with work and family, but I'm going to do my best. I think I've really sort of streamlined um you know, how fast I can get my studio set up because, you know, in my house, my house is only three bedrooms. 
Um, one of them is where you know my wife and I sleep. It's a bedroom. Um, the other, uh, the second one is uh, the nursery. Um, you know, that's my daughter's room where it has her crib and all her toys and her changing table and, and all of her little activities and stuffed animals and such. And then the third bedroom is, um, it's sort of like an office slash gym. Uh, there's a desk in there for myself. There's a desk in there for the wife. Uh, there's a wall mounted television. Um, where you can put on like workout videos and stuff like that. Um, there's some there's some gym equipment like some weights and some elastic bands and some um, you know there's a yoga mat. I don't do yoga, but the wife occasionally does. So um, so it's like an office slash gym. So I don't have like a dedicated studio that has like the camera and the lighting and everything just set up all the time, so I could just walk in and just shoot a video anytime I want. I don't have that. I have to build it. I have to build the studio shoot a video and then take everything down. So, you know, it's, it's important to have, it's important for me to have like a streamlined way to do all of that. Um, because, you know, I, I, what I did for my last video was I actually built the studio. I set everything up the day before I did my shoot. And I, I found that that was really helpful because I didn't have to expend all this mental energy and, you know, building everything and making sure that light is in the right place and all this kind of stuff and everything's connected. All that was done ahead of time. So the next day I just walked in, you know, I turned on the camera and just started shooting. And I think that really helps to, to kind of uh, prepare for that kind of stuff in advance. So I think that's what I'm going to do from now on. But yeah, I don't have a dedicated studio. If I had a fourth bedroom in my house, perhaps I would do that. But Sadly, I don't. So I have to build my studio, shoot a video, and then take everything down. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, uh, you know, I can talk about my next video if you like. Um, you know, say yes in the chat if you want me to talk about my next video. Say no in the chat if you want me to talk about something else. Um, and if you do want me to talk about something else, I would be happy to talk about whatever you want me to talk about. It's a two-way thing. It's not just me rambling on camera. I want to know what your thoughts are. I want to know what your feedback is. I want to know what your likes, dislikes, opinions, attitudes, behaviors. I want to know all of that. So feel free to type whatever you want in the chat whatever you want to discuss. Anton asks, how is it going? I'm doing well, doing well. You know, kind of the same old thing. Um, Siddharth Kumar says, hi man, what's up? Not a whole lot, man, what's up with you? Um, Anton asks me about a funny story. Um, Siddharth Kumar says, love from India. All right, cool, much love back from the US, man. Thanks for, uh, thanks for your support. Funny story. Oh, man. It's so hard to think of a funny story on the spot. Whenever someone asks me to tell a funny story, which doesn't happen very often, but <laughs> whenever someone asks me to tell a funny story, I always, I always have such a hard time. It almost seems like, you know, I have such a boring, unfunny life, which mm, to a large degree is, is kind of true. Um, funny story. Um, I guess, you know, okay, so, so a story had just, has just come to mind. Um, someone just asked me, do you know the JEE advanced examination in India? Nope, I have never heard of it. Uh, okay, so I'll, I'll start with this funny story business. Um, so I'll tell a funny story. Um, it wasn't funny at the time. Um, I had stayed up fairly late at night and, you know, gone to sleep and, you know, I woke up to my dog um, just kind of crying and whining, you know, he wanted to go outside and go to the bathroom and all that stuff. So, um, you know, I opened the door, I let him out and then I just go right back to bed while he's still outside. And, um, there's a gate to my backyard that, you know, I have like a vinyl, a vinyl fence around or most of the fence around my yard is, is, a uh, is a chain link fence, but a part of it that has the gate on it is, is vinyl. And, um, so I have this vinyl gate and it's kind of falling apart. It's very old and it doesn't close very well. And if you don't like tie it down, I have like, <laughs> I have, you know, like the string trimmer line, like the stuff that you uh, install into a weed eater to like, you know, whack weeds and stuff like when you're doing yard work. I use some of that string trimmer line to kind of tie the gate together 
so that my dog can't get out. And um, I had to untie it because I had to like put, you know, mow the lawn. I had to, you know, pull the lawn mower through the gate. And I just forgot to tie that string trimmer back around the gate. So again, it's, it's the morning. I, I'm running on very low sleep. My dog's outside. Uh, I fall back asleep. And then I wake up maybe about a half hour later. And, um, you know, I don't hear the dog barking, which is strange because he usually, he usually barks when he wants to come back inside. And so I look out in the backyard. He's not in the backyard. And I look and there's like a space, you know, in the gate where it's wide enough for him to have gotten through. So I'm like, shit, he's out in the neighborhood somewhere. So I go outside and I see, you know, I look right and I don't see him. And then I look left and I see him at the, like all the way at the end of the street. I see my dog all the way at the end of the street. And, you know, whenever I chase my dog down the neighborhood, he, he just thinks it's a game. He's, he just thinks we're playing. He doesn't understand that I'm really upset with him. And I want to get, you know, I want him to get back inside. And so, you know, we play the game. Of course, it's involuntary for me. I don't want to play a game. I just want him to get the hell back inside of my house. So we're playing this chasing game. And then, you know, I finally get close enough to him where I can grab him by the collar. And uh, actually, no, no, no. I take that back. He didn't have a collar on. Most of the time he does have a collar on, but I had recently given him a bath uh, for which I had taken the collar off. And then I just never put the collar back on. So it was kind of hard to grab him. Uh, and, and, you know, usually if, if he's got a collar on, I can grab him by the collar and just sort of gently, you know, not jerk him really hard or anything like that. I mean, I love him. He's my dog. I wouldn't inflict pain on him. But, you know, so he didn't have a collar on, right? So, you know, I basically just picked him up. He's like a few pounds shy of 50, right? So he's kind of heavy, but not too bad. So I'm still able to like lift him up and, and walk him all the way to the house. And then I lift him up and I start to smell something unpleasant. And then I look at the top of, you know, his back where it's, you know, his fur and stuff like that. And there's fecal matter on it. So when he was in the backyard, he actually rolled around in his own shit. <laughs> so, you know, I'm carrying this dog. He's got poop on his back. Um, you know, he's kind of like I'm carrying him and he's, you know, he's like up against my chest. And so you know, my shirt starts to smell like it. And I'm like, still, again, I'm running on really low sleep. So I'm like really upset. Um, I'm like, Ugh, I'm just really cranky. And so, you know, I lead him, you know, I have to give him a bath. So, you know, I, I, I grab a towel, I grab his dog shampoo and I, you know, get the hose out, you know, give him a bath. And then, um, he, uh, you know, he's all clean. He's ready to go. I lead him back inside and those of you who are dog owners, maybe your dog behaves the same way that mine does after a bath. My dog goes bonkers after he takes a bath. After I give him a bath, there's just something about, there's like this post-bath craziness that my dog puts on display. And again, my, my daughter is still asleep, okay? And so when, he, when I bring him inside, he's just barreling and blah, blah, he's just, he's just running it, like just sprinting all over the house. And it's not, it's not a big house at all. So he's just bouncing off the walls and doing all this crazy shit. And he barrels into my daughter's room and he's, you know, he's like shaking around and everything. So of course my daughter wakes up, my daughter wakes up and she starts, you know, like, ah, hey, you know, I want to get out of this crib. So I'm like, okay, well, you know, I'll just let the dog run out of steam and I'll, you know, take my daughter out of bed. And, you know, the first thing I do when I take my daughter out of bed is uh, change your diaper. Um, so, you know, I open up her diaper and there's poop in it. <laughs> so before I'm even fully awake, I've had to deal with my dog's poop and I've had to deal with my daughter's poop. Um, so it was, it, was a, it was kind of a rough start to the day, <laughs> to put it mildly. But of course, you know, looking back on it, I can, it's something I can sort of look back on and laugh. So I hope that satisfies your request for telling a funny story. And, um, yeah, so it's all true. Nothing false. So, yeah. Okay. So, um, the, uh, gentleman from India sent me a couple of messages. What did he say? He says, here's a tip for you. Just type J E E slash N E E T in your video titles and watch your videos go skyrocket. Indian kids here are crazy for those two exams. J E E and N-E-E-T are two Indian exams that kids take to study engineering and MBBS, respectively. Cool. Okay. Um, you know, uh, I, I appreciate that suggestion. Thank you. Thank you very much for that suggestion. My only... Um, 
apprehension about putting those in my putting those uh those letters in my in every title is that you know my videos aren't tailored specifically to those exams and so i i just think it would be a little bit dishonest of me um to do that um gaining views getting viewership is very important it's starting to rain i hope it's not too loud um getting views is extremely important and you know when you have more views when you have a bigger following when you have more clout you can sort of mobilize your audience to do good in the world and that's very very important and i and i totally understand that um so i, I do appreciate the suggestion but um i will have to respectfully decline because um yeah my videos aren't tailored towards those exams they're just um on chemistry topics um Perhaps in the future, maybe um, I can take a, look, a closer look at specific exams and, and maybe tailor some videos to them. Uh, but for the time being, you know, I'm not even halfway through my, my general chemistry textbook in the, the topics that I've covered. So, you know, I've still got a lot of work to do. Um, and again, I, not only would I like to do that, but I'd also like to move on to, you know, organic chemistry would be good. There's a lot of people that take organic chemistry classes, you know, pre-med students and such, they need organic chemistry. Uh, they tend to despise it with a passion where I love it. I, organic chemistry is my favorite um, sort of sub-discipline of chemistry. Um, and then, you know, of course, there's like the more specialized branches of chemistry, like physical chemistry and inorganic chemistry. You know, it's tricky with those two, physical chemistry and inorganic chemistry, because the content is very difficult to digest. It, uh, especially for physical chemistry, it relies heavily on advanced mathematics that I'm not very good at, so I'd have to sort of reteach myself a lot of those topics to do physical chemistry. Um, and meanwhile, you know, the target audience is, is kind of small, so you spend all this time and you do all this hard work reteaching yourself and, and trying to make a video on these complicated topics without stuttering over and over again. And then it turns out that, you know, not a lot of people are gonna watch it because so few people actually need that knowledge or, or seek that knowledge. So, um, but again, that's a, that's a bridge that I'll cross when I get to it. Still plenty of things that I can uh, cover in the meantime. You know, I don't have any videos on chemical equilibrium. I don't have any videos on acid-base reactions. Uh, I don't have any videos on, you know, entropy or Gibbs free energy. I don't have any videos on uh, electrochemistry. So a lot of general chemistry topics that I, um, that I still need to tackle, uh, you know, in my opinion, you know, there's, there's still lots of work left to do. So yeah, it's kind of coming down here. Um, so <laughs> I hope it's not too loud. Last, <laughs> last week when I was streaming, uh, I was chewing gum. I didn't really think it would be that loud and obnoxious, but then when I, when I went back to watch my stream, you know, I, I just couldn't get that sound of my chewing out of my head. It was just so awful. So I sincerely apologize if anybody watched last week's stream. I sincerely apologize for putting you through that. And I assure you, it will not happen again. So, yeah. That's what's up. You know, I think I'm going to start driving. Um, I need to go to the grocery store to pick up a couple of things before I go home. So I think I'm going to throw it in gear and... Uh, and get going safely of course just open the door and dance lol okay <laughs> not exactly sure what that means but thank you uh. it hasn't rained all day and now during my stream that's when it decides to start raining guy says take care ben you're a good man thanks man you're a good man also uh actually i'm not sure um what you are if you're a man or uh, a woman but whatever you are you're a good one thank you so much for watching thank you for your support thank you for your kind words i wholeheartedly appreciate it so yeah do, 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 do. you're a man all right i will remember that from now on cool man right on man Waiting my turn to take a left turn. A lot of cars on the road. What's going on? It's a very small city. Where are you going now, by the way? Uh, you know, I'm going home from work and I'm gonna stop by the grocery store uh, on my way home. So I'll probably just post up in the grocery store parking lot and, uh, 
and just talk to you guys for, you know, as long as, you know, until there's really nothing more to talk about until a good stopping point, and then I'll go to the grocery store and finish out my day. So, oh, somebody sent me a long message. I can't really read it right now because I'm driving, but I, uh, when I get to a red light or something, I will read it. Uh, guy says, I saw your videos are as old as 10 years ago. What were you doing then and what are you doing now? Good question. Thank you very much for asking. So uh, 10 years ago when I started my YouTube channel, I was, I think, a sophomore in college. Guy says, love the stream, but I got to go. All right, man, take it easy. Have a great rest of your day. Have a great weekend. Uh, so yeah, 10 years ago, um, I was a college student. I uh, basically started the channel after having been inspired from other YouTubers that were doing similar things. Uh, I had a real hard time. I had to take calculus in college and I had a really hard time with it. The professor wasn't that great. So I, um, I turned to YouTube for help and I found some really good help on YouTube and it just kind of inspired me. I'm like, you know, I think I'd like to do something like this myself. And so, uh, and so I started, you know, doing it. Um, I had a really cheap phone and that I used as my camera. It took terrible video and it took even more terrible audio. But, you know, for some reason, one of my videos that has like over a million hits, which I don't have many videos at all with over a million hits, very, very few. I don't know how many, but it's like less than five, I think. But one of those five that has over a million hits was actually shot with that cheap piece of shit phone. So, you know, it's, it's interesting. Like you can never predict how well a video is going to do, or, you know, like, I guess it just depends on, you know, the topic, you know, what, what people are looking for at that time. Um, I, tr I try to do my best to predict, you know, what, what kind of topics are going to do well with, you know, and, and, and get views and stuff like that. But, you know, I can't figure it out. So instead what I'm doing is I'm just, <laughs> you know, trying to make a video for every topic. And yeah, yeah, he says, uh, he says it's about hybridization. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Right, SP cubed, SP squared, SP hybridization. You know, it's funny because people, um, it, it's so funny because like, you'd think on educational videos, you know, people wouldn't talk shit, you know, but shit talking is like universal. Like it applies everywhere, including educational videos, uh, I've come to find out. And one of the biggest hate comments, or I guess not a hate comment, but one of the biggest critical comment comments that I get from people on that video that don't know what the hell they're talking about is they'll say, it's SP3 and SP2. It's not SP cubed and SP squared. And I'm like, really? Because I've actually heard like distinguished tenured academic professors say SP cubed and SP squared. I mean, I think those two terms are interchangeable, but of course, People want to grandstand, people want to complain, people always want to jump in and correct anytime you make even the remotest mistake. Um, and then, you know, I look on their channels, they don't have any content, so they, they're not creators, they're not, you know, trying to make the world a better place. All they want to do is just, uh, is just talk shit about other people, probably because of their own inactivity and their own insecurity as a result of that inactivity. Just speculation, but that's what I think it is. So... Yeah, the hybridization video, you know, it was shot with a very, very, very primitive, very cheap camera. And for some reason, you know, it just took off. It just, I'm not going to say viral because I don't really know exactly numerically what viral means, but, you know, it took off and, uh, and it got, and it got, you know, relatively to, to what, to what my views normally get, it got a lot of views. I mean, you know, it's, it was pretty crazy. So he says I'm on point. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> follow your channel since two years. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Yeah. Um, thanks for the continued support. You know, um, I know that I am not historically the most consistent uploader, <laughs> to put it mildly. I take, you know, I, I have, I have had very, very, very long periods of inactivity uploading to my channel. Um, sometimes I, I can't help but think about, you know, what, how successful my channel would be if I had just been uploading consistently over the course of the, of the last 10 years. But, oh, I don't know, man, without, without getting too personal, you know, life, uh, life happens. Um, sometimes, you know, you're just not very motivated, you know, for a variety of reasons. Um, 
sometimes life just isn't really pushing you in the direction to to uh, to make videos. Guy says, "Yeah, we Indians love chemistry a lot." Cool. Yeah, I I, uh, I can imagine. I um, I've worked in some labs in the past uh, with some Indian folks. Um, very very friendly. Very hardworking. Very hardworking people. <clears throat> so. Um, yeah, definitely. You know, my, my boss, my boss is actually Indian. <laughs> I'm not going to drop his name because I don't know if he's in the privacy or not. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the, my, my manager, uh, he's, uh, he's Indian. He's a good guy. Uh, I think we, uh, we have, a, I mean, I haven't been, been working at this job very long, but, um, you know, so far so good. Um, good boss, good boss. So there was another message that I'm going to try to read. Uh, guy says, do you have any interest in space slash astronomy by any chance? Um, yeah, you know, um, sure. I mean, I don't have like a super affinity for it. There was this media shower that I got out of bed really, really early to go watch. I think it's called like the Ada Aquarids uh, media shower. Um, and, uh, and I thought that was kind of cool. So, um, I don't follow, you know, space stuff super closely, but, um, you know, but yeah, it's, it's all, you know, it's, it's cool. I like it. Sure. Um, you know, I used to live in Orlando, Florida and Orlando is pretty close to the Kennedy space center. It's about like a 45 minute drive from Orlando to the Kennedy space center. So, um, anytime there was like a rocket launch or anything like that, I could just, you know, go outside my house and just look at it and, uh, and it would be very visible. So, um, so yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. Uh, let's read the, I wish I could just leave the chat up. Every time I bring the chat up, it stays up for a little bit and then it just disappears and I have to like wake the chat back up. I don't, is there a way I don't know if anybody else is involved in live streaming. I'd love for you to shed some light on that. But like, is there a way to just permanently have the chat up? That would be awesome. Really, your boss is an Indian. Ha ha ha. Damn, Indians are everywhere. <laughs> yeah, they sure are. And uh, I don't have a problem with that because uh, my experience with them, for the most part, has been uh, has been good. If you could meet one scientist from the past, who would it be and Why? Very good question. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it, I think it would be cool to meet like some of those older like Greek philosophers like Aristotle and Plato and stuff like before there was like an even concrete, you know, scientific method or any kind of advanced instrumentation or techniques. You know, these guys just had to use their brains. They had to use pure intuition to do their reasoning. So I think Aristotle would be among among the top the top dogs that I would want to meet. Um, you know, Isaac Newton comes to mind. I think he was probably pretty cool. Um, Einstein, of course. I mean, you can't you know you can't go wrong with him. You know, you know he was uh, writing a he was he wrote a letter to the president. I can't. My history is terrible. I'm really bad with U.S. presidents. But he wrote a a letter to the president of the United States at the time about how. Uh, about how powerful these uh, these atomic bombs were, and you know you should you should take this seriously because these bombs that are being developed by these guys are are really really powerful, <laughs> and that ultimately led to uh, you know historic uh, atomic bomb droppings on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, which is a you know pretty pretty painful uh, history uh, you know moment of history um, of the past, but um, nevertheless it's it's fairly interesting. Um, G.N. Lewis, you know, the guy for whom Lewis dot structures are named, I think he would be interesting to meet because from what I've heard about him, he was, uh, kind of an a-hole, like he was kind of a prick. So I just think it'd be fun to meet some, you know, some mad scientist who's just like, you know, really, really hard to get along with. I just think that would be fun maybe to like troll him or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But that's, that's a good question though. I've never, I've, I haven't really given much thought to that before. I haven't really... Roosevelt. Yeah, Roosevelt was the was the president. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, thanks for uh thanks for uh for letting me know about that. I I just don't, you know. I don't really follow history all that much, man. I'm I'm, I'm more interested in the future than I am in the past. And I know, you know, those who don't know their history are doomed to repeat it and all that kind of 
all that kind of stuff. But you know, I'm I'm much more interested in in the future and also in the right here, in the right now, enjoying the moment, spending my time having this live stream talking with you wonderful folks. So but yeah, so what did I say? I said, you know, Aristotle, he, although you could argue that he wasn't actually a scientist, although he did kind of develop the foundations for what would eventually become the scientific method. Um, Albert Einstein and, and uh, G.N. Lewis, I think, would be would be cool. I think, I, and also, like, a lot of those guys who, who um, you know, made those big discoveries that, that led to the uh, current understanding of the structure of the atom, you know, like J.J. Thompson and Robert Milliken and uh, Ernest Rutherford, although technically it was his students Geiger and Marsden who who uh, did the research with the gold foil experiment that Rutherford took credit for. But I guess that's the perks of being an academic professor is that you get to take credit for the work that your students do. So, yeah, I think it'd be cool to meet those guys. Um, yeah. So... Um, guy says, what are your views on current AI technology? I, I don't know, man. I don't know much about it. Um, yeah, I don't know much about it, to be honest. Um, so it says, even you Google up, you'd find out there, there were lots of scientists in Vedic India, Vedic meaning ancient per se. Oh, okay, cool, cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. I didn't know that uh, India was home to uh, to a lot of famous scientists. I didn't know that. Very cool. Very cool. But yeah, about the AI, the AI technology. I, I don't really know much about the current the current state of it. Um, so. Um, I know there was like this Elon, like Elon Musk was on the Joe Rogan podcast talking about it. And, you know, I, I had the podcast on, like I was listening, you know, like it was on, like it was coming through my, my, uh, my headphones, but I was working on something at the time. So I, I wasn't really devoting my full attention to it. So I don't really remember exactly what he was talking about with like the neural net and all that kind of stuff. Um, so maybe I should pay more attention to what I'm listening to. You know what? I take that back. No, I should be paying more attention to the work that I'm doing in my lab. So, yeah, I stand by that. <laughs> so, let's see. I have to pull the chat back up. Oh, guillotine chemistry has just joined us. Hello. So, for those of you who are in here or are unaware, uh, I released a video this morning trying to hype up a premiere of a video from guillotine chemistry that was about, oh, man... I am so blanking on the name right now. Oh, the type of fireworks. Please type it in the chat. <laughs> I don't know why I'm blanking. Senko Hanabi? Ah, gosh, I can't. I know it's Senko. Please. Please, guillotine chemistry. Help me out here. So, yeah, there it is. Senko Hanabi. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I'm having a dumb moment. Senko Hanabi fireworks. Yeah, so guillotine chemistry dropped this video on Senko Hanabi fireworks. And uh, he's, uh, what happened to my memory? I don't know. It's just, I have that live stream memory where like my, I don't know, my brain's just kind of all over the place. But anyway, Guillotine Chemistry uh, released this video on Senko Hanabi fireworks. And uh, it's like they made sparklers that originated in Japan. There's been a lot of research on them and, you know, how to, you know, tweak the composition of the ingredients and, you know, the type of paper that you use to house them and the way that you wrap them and all kinds of fascinating things. And, you know, it's the, it's a, it's a really like, you know, almost sim like kind of simple, but very elegant um, example of, uh, of, of, a, of a guy who's just really interested in something, um, uh, you know, just applying the scientific method, testing hypotheses, reading research, and then, um, you know, and, and, and seeing how it works. And, uh, you know, he's got some pretty good, some pretty good fireworks, these really cool looking sparklers that you know throw a bunch of molten slag well maybe not molten but i don't really know exactly what molten means like what the criteria for molten is but okay guy says uh all right ben gotta go you take care of you and your family best wishes all right man you do the same you do the same and thank you so much for joining appreciate it appreciate it so uh so yeah for those of you who are in here who didn't get a chance to check out that video um guillotine chemistry you're welcome to drop a link in the chat if you uh if you want to um 
it's a it's a very cool video um i had i mean it's it's also extremely well produced you know um we were talking about he said he added a second video with just the vids of the senkos burning okay cool yeah i definitely want to see that definitely going to check that out definitely going to drop a like on it and i suggest the rest of you who are in here uh to do the same uh guillotine chemistry is a great youtube channel um i had the privilege of chatting with uh guillotine chemistry in the discord and uh, we talked about a lot of interesting stuff um so it was uh it was pretty cool and i'm very impressed with his editing skills um you know watching that video you know of course like the fireworks themselves and, and everything all the research and and the composition and all the fascinating things about it was interesting but i couldn't help but also think damn i really want to get that adobe creative cloud ah <laughs> <laughs> uh, man i mean i'm not sure i i guess what is it premiere premiere pro is the is the video editor on the adobe creative cloud i think is what it is um god it makes my software just look ooh big bolt of lightning i just saw right in front of me 12 o'clock um yeah yeah it is nice is, is what he says yeah yeah um i i imagine i'm, I'm a, I, I imagine it's it's especially nice when you uh when you um you know when you're the organization for which you work is paying for it i bet that's even nicer <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i i just have a you know back back in the old days when you know you could buy in like an unlimited license to software and you didn't have to it wasn't cloud-based and you just paid once and, and you were you were there forever you had that software forever um back in those days which actually really wasn't that long ago i um i purchased a a piece of software called camtasia studio and i upgraded it to I don't know if it's the latest version of, or of Camtasia Studio or not, but it's, uh, you know, every, every software has their adva advantages and disadvantages. Cam Camtasia Studio is actually really good for, like, um, you know, screen capturing, and it's uh, integrated with PowerPoint and things like that. So, um, uh, let's see. This message is for blah, blah, blah in the comments. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. Um, if you guys uh, want to DM each other, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> but um you know anyway so uh cool the guy says i used to feel the same way i hated the idea of a subscription service until adobe won me over yeah you know there's um there's advantages and disadvantages you know of course um you know if you're paying continually i'm i'm, I'm assuming that means you're gonna get upgrades to the software faster you know and they're gonna there's probably more customer support and things like that so um it's not all bad to have to pay monthly for cloud-based software but you know i kind of liked it where you just paid for it and you owned it so kind of missed that especially with like microsoft office you know like you used to just pay for microsoft office fixed price straight up and you just have it forever you don't have to continue paying for it um, now you need the, uh, you know, the Microsoft account and you have to, to pay for it. So you have to keep paying for it. So guy says, I got to go because of my JEE exam preparation. Had a great time with you. Take care and love from India. Right back at you. Love from the USA. Thank you uh, very much for joining and for participating in this discussion that we're having today. Mwah! I mean that in the most, you know, hetero <laughs> way possible. <laughs> so check out ScreenFlow. It isn't a subscription. Not bad. ScreenFlow, is that a Mac? Is that like an Apple one or do they have like Mac? Do they, is it like Apple and Windows? Because I've heard of ScreenFlow before, but I was under the impression that ScreenFlow was limited to Apple computers. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Because um, there was another, another guy that I used to follow who um, you know he did like screen capturing videos and stuff like that and he used ScreenFlow in combination with keynote which is apple's sort of version of powerpoint it's actually a, a much nicer cleaner looking presentation software apple products tend to have things that look really sharp and clean he says i have it for mac i don't know if it's for both yeah i am a uh, i'm a pc guy so um, I will definitely check it out though, but honestly, like I have very few complaints about Camtasia Studio. I mean, the video that I, that I released on Monday, um, the, you know, the Lattice Energy and the Bornhopper Cycle video, uh, that video, 
um, was con entirely edited using Camtasia Studio. So it, it has a lot of features, you know, you can put in call outs, you can uh, change the visual properties of things, you can do animations to move things around or make them bigger or make them smaller or change their color or change their opacity. Um, you can, you know, enable color removals to the point where, you know, you can remove the green from a green screen, although clearly I need some work in that, I need some help in, in that department because, um, <laughs> you know, and I joked about this on the video, I left a comment underneath that said I ate a lot of spinach before, <laughs> before shooting this because there is kind of a green hue around me. Uh, so I think I'm going to tweak my lighting, maybe even upgrade my lighting, get a couple more lights. My brother is actually a videographer, so he, he's actually very knowledgeable when it comes to, you know, the best way to light up a green screen. In fact, he actually drew a diagram and sent it to me about how I should, how I should light my green screen. Of course, it requires equipment that I don't yet have, so I'll have to, you know, save up some money and, you know, maybe buy some, some, uh, some additional lighting in, in addition to the lights that I already owned. Uh, to light up my green screen the proper way. So, yeah, it's very fascinating stuff. You know, I, I have, I don't know about you, guillotine chemistry, if you're still in this uh, stream, but I, I have no, no formal experience of any kind with um, any kind of videography stuff, video editing. I wasn't even in the, you know, the AV society in, in high school, you know. <laughs> uh, he says he likes my setup. Oh, cool, man. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, you know, uh, I'm assuming you're saying that because you saw the photo. Uh, yeah, I remember you left a comment. You left a comment. Um, yeah, in a community post, I released a photo that kind of had my my setup on it. So I have like these two lights with the, you know, with the umbrellas that are kind of hovering, you know, more like in front and almost above. Uh, but according to my brother, I also need two additional lights that are much like that are almost like maybe like either behind me or like level with me like in the same plane as me but out of the the shot right um pointing at the green screen the goal of which is to have like a uniform green uh light that's not casting a shadow on the screen so um he says me neither but my wife's a photographer so we learn off each other oh yeah 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 now i remember i remember uh in the discord call you mentioned that so that's pretty cool that's pretty cool um my uh wait a minute why is it saying I deleted your messages? That's weird. My chat just popped up and said that I deleted your messages and weird. I, I didn't, I did not delete any messages. This is crazy. I'm going to try to put those back up. I, I don't know what the heck's going on with this YouTube, li YouTube live stream stuff. Um, what is going on? I don't know what's going on. Dude says, I'm going to follow you on Twitter. Yeah, you know, I do have it. Thanks, man. I do have a Twitter, although I never, <laughs> I, I hardly ever tweet anything. Uh, I, I very rarely promote any kind of social media, but I'm, I'm going to try to get better about that. Uh, my channel page does have links to, you know, like the channel banner, the art that's above your, you know, at the top of your channel page. I do have links to uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Discord. Discord to me is the most important one because that seems like the one uh, on which I can have the best opportunity to interact with, uh, directly with my audience instead of just, you know, post things and get likes and stuff like that. I'm really not as interested in that. So, um, so yeah. Mm. So, uh, 18TE68 says, hi, hello, how are you? I hope you are doing well. Guy says, all right, Discord too. Yeah, yeah, join my Discord. Join my Discord if you would, please. Um, don't know what I'm going to do with it, you know, yet, but um, this guy says, do I talk to people on voice over Discord? Um, I have before, um, and I'm totally willing to, but, you know, I never, uh, no one ever asks, you know. <laughs> no one ever asks me if they, uh, if they, if they, you know, like, hey, let's jump in a video call. Like, I never get offers like that. And I've, I've said things multiple times, like, you know, just in general in my videos. Like, hey, you know, if you ever want to jump in a, a video call or, a, you know, a Discord audio call or a group, you know, discussion call, whatever, like, you know, I'm, I'm totally down for it. But nobody nobody takes me up on that. Um, I have had a couple of people ask me to help with their homework. Um, <laughs> uh, there, was this, there was this one guy, he, uh, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to talk shit, but he, you know, he sent me, um, like a screenshot of a, of a, of a homework problem. 
Guy says you are one hell one hell of a charming man, no homo. <laughs> Thanks, dude. <laughs> Thank you for that feedback. I, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um shit, what was I saying? Something about Discord. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This kid sent me a screenshot of a, of a, a homework, you know, it was like some kind of problem he was having a hard time with. It was about titrations and stuff. And, uh, and um, you know, I took a look at it and I DM'd him back and I'm like, okay, you know, when would you be available for a video call, right? Because when it comes to like helping people with their homework, like I'm not going to give you the step-by-step -step solution, you know, word for word. Like I'm going to ask you, like, what do you think you should do next and why? And then, you know, I'll, I'll, it'll be like a back and forth. It's not going to be just me showing you from start to finish how to solve the problem. I'm not going to do your homework for you. And I'm not talking to anybody in here. I'm just, I'm just talking in general. <laughs> like, you know, like I, that's not the way I, that's not the way I help people. Like I help people by, you know, getting them to solve the problems and just kind of, you know, and it, the analogy that just popped in my head is like, if someone's like lifting weights, they're on the bench press. Like, you know, my job is to sort of spot you. You're the one doing the lifting, right? But I'm kind of giving you that little, that little nudge, maybe the two to four fingers underneath the bar to help lift it up, you know, but you know, you're the one, you know, or not you specifically, but whoever asks me for help is, is the one who, who has to do the work. I'm just kind of the, the helper. I'm the facilitator. Um, so if anybody ever asks me for help, with any kind of uh, problem that they have, um, of course I'm ecstatic. I'm happy to help uh, whenever I can. I'm you know I'm pretty busy. I got a full time job, a wife and a daughter, and, and a dog who likes to occasionally roll around in his own fecal matter. But whenever I can, I'm happy to help. But um, but yeah, I uh, I just help. I'm just the spotter. I'm not the lifter. So yeah. Let's see what's going on. So yeah, I, I think I answered your question about <laughs> do I ever talk to people uh, on voice on, over Discord? Yeah, totally, totally willing to do that. I don't charge money or anything like that. Um, it's totally free. Um, so, you know, I'm not the kind of person to nickel and dime people. Um, so yeah, you're welcome to. Now, that being said, look, you know, if, if I, you know, get bigger for lack of a better term if i start to grow more and more and more of a following to the point where people just jump into my discord and start trolling um then i might start to charge money for access to my discord just so that people can sort of put their money when they're where their mouth is you know charging money for things is kind of a way to um you know filter out people who are just in it to troll because you know if people are just trolling you um very rarely are they going to actually throw down their own money just to troll you instead they'll just go to somebody else that they control for free so you know if if that was the case if i just got infiltrated by trolls just you know bungeeing in i would uh you know i would charge a little bit of money for it but as i see it right now everybody in my discord is really cool so um i'm happy keeping it free for the time being so that goes for anybody in here um if you're on discord and if you um look at my look at my uh, channel page on youtube here there's a link to my discord it's a permanent link it doesn't expire so you are welcome to follow that link and uh, join my discord server um, hop in there talk about whatever you want to talk about um, you know there's a lot of people who are kind of in there but it's not a super active group um, sometimes i try to you know say something to sort of stimulate some discussion like hey what's your favorite element and why and, and you know whatever um, but it's not a very active Discord group. I'm, I'm basically just in the process of just trying to assemble assemble people into a group, just try to get as much like-minded people in there as possible. And then, you know, maybe when it reaches a certain critical mass of viewership, then we can, or, uh, or membership, then we can, uh, you know, then we can start having like some big discussions and stuff. I think that'd be cool. So, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. What else do you guys want to talk about? Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Anything, anything at all you guys want to talk about? Coming up on 49 minutes, so I think probably within the next 10 minutes or so I'll be at a, you know, at a point where I can, uh, I'll probably be ending the stream in about 10 minutes or so. So we have 10 minutes of good discussion ahead of us, so I hope we can make the most of it says, what's your full-time work about? You were talking about lab, organic chemistry. 
Yeah, so what I'm currently doing at my full-time job, it's funny because you're like the first person, well, maybe not the first person to ask me that, but I don't, you know, I, I think, I think, um, I would think that more people would ask me what I do for work, but very few people seem to care, <laughs> which is fine. I mean, I don't feel upset about that. Like, if you don't care, you don't care, no big deal. But um, to answer your question, what I do for work is I work uh, for... Uh, the pharmaceutical services division of a very large biotech company that, uh, and the research, I do research and development on active pharmaceutical ingredients. So um, in the, the drug manufacturer research and development business. Um, I'm very, very new to it. I don't know much about it. Um, today, I actually had a pretty big breakthrough and somebody took me a tour uh, to a particular building on my site that I've never been to. Um, where we work with uh, things that are like a lot of people are allergic to. So like we have to like, you know, you have to like take off your clothes and put on like a Tyvek suit. And then, you know, after you're done working in that lab, you have to like on your way out, you have to like get a shower and, you know, throw your suit away and put your clothes back on and leave the lab. So it's like pretty, pretty serious stuff. You know, it kind of feels like you're really doing something important when you have to do all that just to, just to go in the lab and bang out some work. But yeah, so, uh, so yeah, I, I, uh, I do research and development on active pharmaceutical ingredients. That's what I do. And so you're the legal Jesse from Breaking Bad. <laughs> yes, I am. Yeah, yo, Mr. White, we're going to make some drugs, yo. Oh, man, that was a bad impression. I wish I could take that back, but I can't because we're live. Yo, Mr. White. Yes, science. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, I'm, I prefer to think of myself more as Walt than Jesse, but, you know. I'll take Jesse. Jesse's cool. Jesse's like the only like moral level-headed, you know, good guy at the end of that show. And that's all I'm going to say. I don't want to spoil it for anybody who hasn't seen it. And by the way, if you haven't seen Breaking Bad, get out from under a rock and go watch it. It's on Netflix. You have no excuse. Everybody has Netflix. So you, everybody has Breaking Bad. Go watch it. It's phenomenal. It's the greatest show of all time. That's a fact. That's not even an opinion. It says, ah, come on, Walter sucked. I liked Walt. I liked Walt. I have a soft spot for Walt, especially since I used to teach high school chemistry. I know what that's like. So, um, what else? But yeah, um, so before, uh, before I got this job, I actually, um, Walter started off as if a good guy turned to evil, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, in the beginning, Walt was like the protagonist and then you know, as he kind of became the antagonist over time. So that was like a very interesting idea that I don't think any any show had really done before. I can't really think of any any TV show, maybe movies, but I've never heard a TV show like that where the the good guy, you know, becomes the bad guy. Maybe I'm wrong. I just can't think of any right now. But um, but yeah, before I before I was doing this active pharmaceutical ingredients research, I actually spent three and a half years, which is the longest amount of time that I've ever held any job. I spent three and a half years working for a startup company, a startup uh, defense contractor, uh, doing research and development on rocket fuel and propellants. So during those three and a half years, I could actually say, uh, yeah, I'm a rocket scientist. <laughs> Although I technically wasn't a rocket scientist, I was more of a rocket fuel scientist. But, uh, yeah, very, very, um, you know, it's the kind of work where, you know, you could, you could tell people what you do and people would actually be interested, which I like, I like having a job. And I, and I, I think I can say that even today doing research on active pharmaceutical ingredients, people are actually interested in that kind of work. Like it's much, it just rolls off the tongue nicer than to tell people at a cocktail party, oh yeah, you know, I'm the manager at, at, uh, at Denny's or yeah, I, I, I sell, I sell phone service at T-Mobile, <laughs> you know, like, I just think that, um, I don't know. It's just kind of a job that I can really wear with pride. Something that I can say, yeah, this is what I do. And then people were like, oh, okay, that's very interesting. Please tell me more. Does anybody say that's interesting? Please tell me more. Whenever somebody said that, says that they sell phone service at T-Mobile, no. And again, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to diss on anybody who sells phone service at T-Mobile, but you know, it's just not that interesting a topic. It doesn't spark a lot of discussion. 
Uh, the guy says, uh, was that my first job, the rocket fuel job? No, no. My first job I, I had when I was 15 years old, I worked at a barbecue restaurant as a dishwasher making like $5.15 an hour. That was my first job. So, yeah, uh, I, I, I literally went into that restaurant on my 15th birthday because like 15 was like the, you know, the minimum, you know, age. Like you couldn't be any younger than 15 to like work in this place. So I walked into that, that barbecue restaurant on my 15th birthday, applied and uh, interviewed, and I was basically hired in, uh, instantly, uh, mostly because my older brother worked there too before me, and uh, he, my older brother worked hard. He made a very good impression working at that restaurant, and so um, they hired me pretty much right away, so I had a pretty good connection. That's how I got my first job. So the guy says, blah, blah, blah. If you have some questions in chemistry and JEE advanced examination, just a request. Okay, yep, duly noted. I'll see what I can do on that. The guy says, if it were, you would have started with hydrogen element with your very first job, pun intended. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, hydrogen's number one. <laughs> that's right, that's right. So, uh, yeah, my first job was in a barbecue restaurant at age 15. Um, I mean... Yeah, I mean, I could take you through my whole work history uh, if, if you want, but I don't know. It's kind of boring. You know, I've had a couple of, I've had a lot of different jobs. Um, one job that I had, so like I, I taught high school chemistry for like almost two years. I, I, I tapped out in the middle of my second year. I just couldn't handle it. Um, this wasn't for me. I personally don't think it's for anybody. I think it's a highly, highly toxic and dysfunctional environment. Um, and that's why I, I just bounced from the teaching profession. But where I'm getting with that is that in between, you know, school years, you know, here in the States, I don't know how it is everywhere else, but here in the States, we have the summers off. Uh, students have the summers off and teachers have the option to teach summer school, which is basically like a mulligan. It's like a, a, a redo, a second opportunity for people who failed their classes to take the entire class over, you know, 12 weeks or less, even though, uh, <laughs> Even though the school year was 36 weeks, they, somehow they can learn all of that content a second time in a third of that time, but whatever. Um, so, the, the, you know, I, I chose not to teach summer school because personally, I don't really want to be involved with kids who need summer school um, because, you know, they're just not interested in learning. Like, I want to teach the kids who are actually interested in learning. Those are the ones that I think I actually have a chance at making an impression on. So anyway... I didn't want to teach summer school my first this first summer after uh, the the first summer after my first year teaching, so I just decided you know what I'm going to do what I want and what I wanted to do believe it or not this might sound silly but what I wanted to do was I wanted to learn how to make good pizza. Yep, I wanted to learn how to make good pizza, and there was this pizzeria right around the corner from my house and they had excellent pizza. It was my favorite pizza in town. Very, very good, fresh ingredients, just oh, so good, owned by first generation Italians. And I, uh, I went in there and I applied and they hired me as a, as a dishwasher, although dishwasher is just a name. I, I, I kind of had a, a role in doing a lot of different stuff, but um, you know, they hired me as a dishwasher and I worked, I worked in that pizzeria over the summer. And let me tell you something, I mean, if it wasn't for the low pay, obviously you're not gonna make you know, fat stacks <laughs> working at a pizzeria unless you own it. But in terms of job experience, that has to be like the best job I've ever had. It was fun. The people were relaxed. It was a very like calm, chill environment. Um, you know, customers were cool. Uh, the, the, the policies on, on, you know, the food that you could have as an employee were very lax. You know, I could just eat whatever I wanted anytime I wanted. Hell, I could even, I kid you not, crack open a beer on the house at the end of the night while I'm closing up. So if it was like, you know, if we closed at 10 o'clock, you know, if it's like nine o'clock or later, I could literally pull out a Bud Light or a Peroni or a Shock Top or whatever other beer they had. I could just pull one out of the fridge and just crack it open and just, you know, enjoy it as I'm, as I'm closing up, you know, washing the dishes, mopping the floors, whatever. It was a good job. And I, I successfully completed my objective of learning how to make good pizza. Um, it turns out, good pizza dough only has six ingredients. Yep, good pizza dough only has six ingredients. You may be asking, what are they? Well, I'll tell you if I can remember them all. Um, one of them is water. One of them is uh, oil. One of them is yeast. 
Uh, one of them is, I can't believe, oh, sugar. Uh, one of them is salt. And the other one is, uh, I can't remember. What did I say? I said, I said, I said water, oil, yeast, salt, sugar, <clears throat> excuse me. And there's one, I mean, I, I'm gonna kick myself if I can't remember this, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, man, you know, you may be hating on me for my memory. Guy says memory with a laughing emoji. You may be hating on me for my memory, but you know, I challenge you to live stream and see if you, and see how good your, your long-term memory is while you're live streaming. Like when you're live streaming, it, your brain kind of like enters this realm where like, maybe you feel a little nervous. You're kind of like on the spot and you know, digging through old memories is, is really, really hard to do. The flower, oh my goodness. Yes, yes, it's the flower. <laughs> So it's, so it's uh, water, oil, salt, sugar, yeast, and flour. Those are all that you need to make excellent pizza dough. So uh, yeah, I, I learned a lot there. And uh, they also, they, they paid me, uh, they paid me in cash too. They paid me like under the table, no taxes. Uh, Actually, you know what? I just went on record and said that. I withdraw my previous statement. I paid all to if any of our friends in the IRS are watching, I paid all I paid all taxes on this money. <laughs> but um yeah, I was I was basically able, you know, my wedding was coming up soon at that time. I was engaged to be married, but not quite married yet. Um so I was able to kind of like pile up some cash and save it over the summer. Uh, I basically just put it in a jar to save up for my wedding. Um so yeah, that's that's one of the best jobs I've ever had in terms of the experience, not in terms of the pay, but in terms of the experience, which is really all I cared about. I mean, I, you know, I'm not a hugely money driven person. Um, you know, so if I can make a decent amount of money while doing something fun or doing something enjoyable, that's kind of, you know, I, I kind of like to aim for the middle in terms of like money versus like what I want to do. So spending one summer working at a pizzeria, um, you know, I created lasting memories that will last a lifetime. Uh, so I stand by that decision. So, uh, yeah. All right. Well, listen, um, we are over an hour now, so I think I'm going to wrap things up and, and stream. Um, thank you very much for watching. Thank you, excuse me, for participating in these discussions. Um, my next video is going to be about electro negativity. Uh, I'm hoping to drop it on uh, Monday. Um, I think I'll be able to do that, but I, um, I can't guarantee you anything, so I won't guarantee when my next video is going to drop, but uh, please keep your eyes peeled for it. Uh, my last video was about lattice energy and the Bornhopper cycles, so if you uh, would like to learn about that or if you need to learn about that, I would highly suggest checking it out. And um, any kind of love you'd like to show me, I would love to receive it in the form of comments, in the form of likes, in the form of, uh, you know, subscriptions, you know, in the form of, uh, you know, spreading the word, telling people about the channel. I would, I would really appreciate it. The dude says fluorine and flowers sound similar when a coincidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah just uh, one safe to eat and the other, not so much. Although fluorine is kind of a, is a, is a gas, so it would be hard to eat. It would be more of like an inhalation problem, uh, and that would be terrible. So, all right, take it easy, everybody. Thanks again for all of your continued support, and um, all right, take care. Mm hmm.